Thursday, Benjamin tonight with no runs added. Oh, and that's out. That's a good start for Leicestershire. Benjamin just angling the ball across Nick Knight. And a comfortable catch for the wicket keeper there. Great start for Leicestershire. Well, they never even had a chance to have a look at the bowling this morning. Both have decided in the dressing room to play shots from the word go. Eight overs. Essex probably feel they need every run possible, but uh, maybe he could have had a couple of balls before he started uh, playing shots. Yes, when well, Leicestershire started this morning, they wouldn't really want to have to chase above 240 maximum. Obviously, less than that would be tremendous for them. And if they could bat well, then they should be in a good position. So that early breakthrough is just what they required. Well, that's a good delivery from Parsons. A devout swing there. And Don Topley just drawn into the stroke. Yes, tail-enders tend to play at the ball, and if it swings or moves off the seam, well, they either nick it or miss it. They're never going to play those. off the over, but uh, Benjamin would be a bit disappointed that he didn't get a hand on that. Well, that's went underneath the hand. It was going fairly quickly, but he would have expected to get something on that. Well, this shot's as good as any batsman could play, and from a tail ender, be exceptionally pleased with that, will Don Topley. And that shot brought the 200 up for Essex. Oh, well, well. That was the perfect Yorker. Garland goes, eight wicket goes down for 208. But Jeff, that was a classic, wasn't it? Well, it was a gorgeous delivery. It just kept coming at the batsman. Uh, watching it, you see a lot of Yorkers going round about the batsman's feet or the batting crease. It just keeps coming, skimming at him. So he jabs the bat down, but it almost hit just in front of the base of the stump. Cracker was that. Beautifully bowled. I don't think we can expect Mark Isla to have uh, hit that too far. Well, there are not too many batsmen would have hit that. There have been left handers. Oh, well, all the luck in the world there for Don Topley. I don't think he really looked at the ball. Took a terrific wahoo. He decided where to hit it, though. But not there. Yes, you just try and hit it into the next field. You've got an inside edge. And this is why uh, all in length balls at uh, the last two or three overs of the game is always dangerous. Well, there's the comeback man, John Agnew. Leicester was short and called him back in. Bring back Ray Lingworth. They're not that short, are they? <laughs> last ball. Beautifully bowled, well up, swinging in on the on the stumps. Topley will turn for two. Agnew fumbles. Well, he can afford to give one away. You can see that 31 runs off his overs. And Alan Mullally is the unlucky bowler there. I think that the, the batsman had a large slice of fortune over the last over. Well, Essex didn't really get that strong finish, though Don Topley did well, and Mark Eilert supporting. But really, it was excellent bowling by Benjamin, which uh, stopped them reaching an attractive total. 226 for eight is good, but gettable. And Leicestershire, excellent seam bowling. Benjamin, Mullally, Parsons and Agnew, all conceding few runs and picking up wickets. The trouble spot, of course, was the combination of Potter and Benson. Quite expensive, but still, I think Leicestershire were happy to get away with it. So Leicester batting second need 227 runs to win off 60 overs at 3.79 runs per over. And let's join them now with their score. Nine for no wicket, the fifth over, and Pringle is bowling to Boone. 
Oh, that's wide and short and boomed very quickly onto that beautiful shot off the back foot there. There's one thing you can't do on this pitch, and that's pitch short. No pace in it, all the time in the world. Well, this is the first really bad ball that Essex have bowled, an easy ball to hit, and he's cracked it away well. There'll be a change of bowling now at the pavilion end. Eric Prindle taking his sweater, and Dom Topley is going to be the bowler from that pavilion end. Well, that's a big shout there for LBW, but uh, again, Don Wesley are not interested. Ball nipping back quite a bit off the seam there. Well, the ball does nip back quite a way, but Nigel Bryce, you see, a long way forward. And uh, that's what might have decided the umpire to give him not out. Sure, that went in the exact position that uh, Nigel Bryce was aiming for. It's still four runs. Well, this is a real confident, positive shot on the up, over the top. I don't think he's too worried about where the ball goes as long as he gets it in the middle of the bat. Tremendous shot again by Tim Boone, short and wide, and done topley and a beautiful square cut there. Yes, these two batsmen playing very nicely, waiting for the odd bad ball and then just putting it away. Uh, tremendous shot again by Tim Boone. It's a half volley, but uh, sent his patch it through the cover boundary. A change of bowling again at the Bennett end. Derek Prindle, who opened from the pavilion, now coming back at this Bennett end. Another quick single, and that brings a 50 up. 31 to... Tim Boone, 16 to Nigel Bryars. Well, it could be out. Oh, and that's a tremendous catch there. That's a little bit silly, Tim Boone. No necessity to do that at the moment. We're in the 17th over. We're 52 without loss. Just be content to keep on going like that, but... Now he's giving it away for Pritchard, the fielder, and really that's still a mistake by Tim Boone. Such an unnecessary shot. It's a rush of blood. They were going along so well. Just try to whack it over the top. If it's less slipped off the face, and an excellent catch. New batsman coming in, James Whittaker. He won't be taking strike as the batsman crossed. And done Topley now to Nigel Bryars. Picked up on the leg side, and that's, yes, that's four. That beats uh, Islet down at long leg. Lovely time shot off his toes there by Bryars. Don Topley to James Whittaker. <laughs> Splendid shot by Whittaker. He's well worth his digging in over 16 balls. Oh. And another one, two and two balls. <laughs> balls are there to be hit from Don Topley, but uh, they were very well hit. Yes, this one's off the back foot. Looking to go forward to start, but then rocking off that back foot and crashing away through the covers. Leicestershire just needed that little bit of impetus there, and James Whitaker just needed as well some bit of confidence. Nigel Bryars has 26, it's 72 for one. And John Stevenson to bowl the 24th over. Oh, I dropped him. Dropped him. And held on for so long, at least juggled with it. 
Yeah, a little bit of a drive on the up, a bit wide, going quite firm. Which they're looking to have caught it, juggling, you think, oh, he's got to still catch it, but down it went. So, Graham Gooch's poor form with the catching continues. Now, oh, that's a good shot. <laughs> that's the third of three handsome fours that James Whitaker struck on the offside. Oh, he picked it up beautifully. It was short, but he saw it well and got it in position. Immaculately. Played the ball down, through mid-wicket. And when Whitaker hits the ball, he plays with real power. Well, that'll be four. Or will it? Oh, <laughs> but they might run four by the time they... Actually, get the ball back in there. That was brilliantly stopped, I must say. And slowed up a little bit in the outfield with a fine tickle down the leg side. 101 for one. And Mark Eilert, the young left arm fast bowler, is coming back. Well, that was a wonderful shot from James Whitaker. When you see that again in slow motion, a great shot. You don't see that very often in first-class cricket. A front foot square drive. Well, oh, that's 50 for Nigel Bryce. Six off the over. And that's been a good 50 by the Leicestershire captain. He played second fiddle a bit to Tim Boone. He's kept the score going well, run well between the wickets. And he's made the 50 out of the 128 for one. 39 overs gone. Well, Graham Pritchett are doing the right thing there. He's looking to hit it on the offside, find the gap, We've got an edge. Going for a third man, a Pringle chase it. Uh, Went to see to his trousers a little there with slipping. Probably got half an hour so there's a bit of dampness on the uh, grass out there. Probably no spikes in the heels. Oh, and that's on this edge going to pull it. Wasn't quite short enough, and that's the wicket that uh, Essex so desperately wanted. James Whitaker there trying to pull Islet, and it really wasn't quite short enough to play that shot. And a very, very simple catch to mid on. Yes, he played very nicely, James Whitaker. It's a good length ball, actually. And he's just trying to make something from it. The tension of the moment. A little bit of panic gets into the batsmen's minds. They see the run rate required. And, uh, and that's what Essex were hoping for, that one of the batsmen would uh, actually get himself out. Changing batting order there. I'm sure that's not Phil Robinson. In fact, it's Winston Benjamin. So Leicester should realise and they'd like to get on with it a little bit. That's probably not bad tactics. And good running there again by Briars. Topley just fumbling the ball fractionally and Briars very awake to the situation. Ah, change of bowling again at the Bennett end. Derek Prindle now coming back. Well, done the trick with a short of a length delivery and sort of nothing ball, but it's taken a wicket. And some Benjamin going to pull it, and Stevenson get another catch up mid-on. Well, that is Phil Robinson this time. The Yorkshireman who left the Yorkshire last season. Just playing one-day matches for Leicestershire this year, but has signed a full-time contract for next year. Well, Graham Gooch has great faith in Derek Pringle. Whenever he's in trouble or at the death of an innings, he usually turns to Derek Pringle. First ball on a length, and Winston Benjamin holds out. The change of bowling now again at the pavilion. Don Topley taking over from Peter Search. Well, a brilliant piece of fielding. It was a beautifully timed shot by Phil Robinson. 
but excellent fielding by Nick Knight and a perfect return. And that really was saving two runs. Well, this is what I talked about, the youngsters in the outfield. I mean, that's as good as anything. Commitment's good, athleticism. a played shot. It might have looked like an edge, but he was always playing it down there. And that's where the gaps are. Fine leg and third man. Well, I've seen him play like this often, Phil Robinson. Watch that, you see. He's looking to late cut it, and then it just waits for it, just waits for it, and just a little touch at the last minute. Another good stop in the outfield by Essex. That's Mark Eilert and Graham Gooch has made a point of getting his youngest and fastest fielders in these key positions around the boundary. Oh, well caught. Brilliant. Almost a fine shot. It was rising above Graham Gooch at cover and the captain jumped, chipped it up and caught it. It was quite outstanding. So 176 for four and Phil Robinson goes. Well, the idea was right from Phil Robinson. He, he knows he has to score off every ball. He's trying to lift the over cover on the up. And Graham Gooch, third time lucky, knocks it up. He's dropped two today. One was difficult. One was fairly straightforward. But this time, no mistake, very intelligently, it's above his head, so he just knocks it up.